Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight across uh, the geographical borders that are imposed on us and uh, the ones imposed by COVID-19. We have friends from Ireland, uh, Canada, and the UK, uh, and Finland tonight. So welcome all of you. Border River. River bird song I couldn't name, nor from which side the bird song came. It came again, it came again, but from which country I couldn't name. I thought tonight I would um, start with thanks and sort of get those done. Uh, thanks, first of all, to Explore York Libraries and Archives for hosting the event, to the Finnish Institute and the people there for the funding of the event, uh, Derry City and Straban District Council for the great advice they gave us and also for some funding support, the Aragale Arts Festival in Donegal. Uh, our event eventually became part of the festival, which was delightful. My two collaborating artists, uh, Jan Eric Anderson and Eileen Hutton, both of whom are here tonight, I think, I hope. Um, all the professionals who uh, helped us and performed with us, you will see some of them later in the film. Uh, Maeve Butler, who was our project manager, Ruth McPhillips, um, Be Beyond, a wonderful performance group who joined us at Claddy, and others too. The event wouldn't have happened without the Claddy Cross Community Development Association. I hope a few people from Claddy are here tonight. Fantastic group of people working to make the border as invisible and irrelevant as possible. And finally to uh, Joe Gilmore, uh, my patient York-based designer who uh, designed River Rain and as I said, had to, had to display quite a bit of patience during it as well. This is the pamphlet um, for those of you who haven't seen it. And of course, uh, it's for sale. Just go on my website if you're interested in that. I want to just give you a bit of introduction, almost the facts behind the scheme before getting into the notebook itself. Um, Notes from a Border River uh, was part of a project called Voicing the Bridge. In January 2019, um, Jan Eric and Eileen and myself successfully responded to a call out from the Finnish Institute looking for projects related to European identity and freedom of movement. Uh, we had proposed, being uh, crazy artists, that if you wanted to consider what borders and freedom of movement meant, then perhaps the Irish border during Brexit negotiations would be an interesting place to start. Uh, that was our proposal and that's where we started, not quite knowing what we'd be getting ourselves into. Our work began properly in March uh, and culminated in a multidisciplinary one-day event in the border village of Claddy on the River Finn in the month of July actually exactly a year ago. It involved us, a choir, musicians, the performance group Be Beyond, and the people of Claddy. The events captured in a film, the spirit of the event as well as the appearance of the event, captured in the film by Jan Eric Anderson, which we'll show a little bit later. But it's the journey from successful proposal to that event that I wanted to share in the pamphlet, uh, the creative journey, the project journey. And um, as a poet, I was interested in tracking that journey. And um, as well as the poems that I wrote, it's, it's really that tracking that I'd like to share with you this evening. And I thought I would start um, with a few photographs because the pamphlet being a kind of scrapbook contains photographs as well as diary and poems. This is just to give you some idea where we were. You can see um, 
Straban there. Cladi, the village of Cladi is about three or four miles south of Straban, about 20 miles south of Derry, Londonderry, which you can see on the map. And you can see roughly where we are. Um, I thought that would be useful. Next photo, please. Uh, this is um, a photo I took from the window of the ferry as I journeyed from Wales to Dublin to meet up with Jan Eric and Eileen. Uh, I thought it was very cute that uh, the lighthouse uh, was green, it being the entrance to Ireland. But uh, what struck me afterwards uh, was that you can see in the, in the upper left, the word emergency is uh, written there. And that's kind of how we were feeling as artists, not quite sure what we were going to do. But also the whole sense of emergency was something we wanted to address uh, in our work. Next photo. This was a sign somewhere, somewhere in Ireland. I can't remember where it was. Next. This was a sign very near the bridge that um, we decided to focus on. So the politics of the time, many of you will remember, were very acute in Ireland because people there were extremely worried that the troubled history of the border between North and South, which had really, really gone quite quiet over the years, was about to be resurrected um, by the Brexit situation. And this is the kind of thing you would see just around the place, just walking around. Next. So this is the wonderful bridge, probably 18th century, um, at Claddy, over the River Finn. And um, Jan Eric had discovered this on Google Maps um, before we applied to, to put our proposal in. And we just thought this bridge was a wonderful, a wonderful thing. But you'll be hearing a lot more about the bridge and, and seeing it as well during the evening. So I won't dwell on it, but you can see how it was attractive to visual artists and poets with these wonderful cut waters and the parapets stretching in both directions. Uh, and of course, we're halfway across the bridge is the border. Next. Halfway over the bridge, uh, you come across this memorial to a young lad who was killed by a bomb he was carrying back in 1973. So uh, there are scars and there are memorials and there's also a lot that's invisible, but this was right on the bridge. Um, so very much on our minds as well. Next. These are the walls of Derry facing the bog side, which is the Catholic side of Derry, London Derry. Um, these letters are enormous. They're sort of, you know, six feet high. Now, this is March. By the time we came back in June, the letters had gone. And they may be back there now, I'm not sure. But I just show it to you to indicate that this debate and this situation was still, still on the surface, despite all the efforts of many, many people. Next. Uh, on the walls, from the walls rather, on the other side, this is towards the, um, the Union uh, Loyalist side of the uh, border. And you can see the sign there, Londonderry, uh, still under siege, no surrender. But I wanted to draw your attention particularly to the curbs. You will see this throughout, throughout the North, uh, the curbs uh, painted red, white, and blue. Next. I much prefer the way the village of Claddy treats its curbs. I thought this multicolored display was just lovely. I don't know who did it. Much preferable, I think, to other treatments of curbs in the north. Next, please. Ah, this is Jan Eric Anderson and Eileen Hutton filming on the bridge. Eileen explaining. Uh, her whole take, which is environmental, on this project. And you'll hear more from her 
later during Jan Eric's film. Next, please. This is Eileen's, these are Eileen's solar powered bees. So if you hold the glove up to any kind of sunlight, the bees start to vibrate on your arm. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Next, please. Uh, this is the Voices of the Foil Choir with their leader in white, Ruth McPhillips. Ruth is having or has had a baby uh, this month, so she was a bit too busy to join us. Um, I had a chance to work with a choir for the first time and uh, co-wrote some songs with Ruth. That was a fantastic experience for me. Uh, and they brought, of course, their spirit. It's a cross-border amateur choir, so perfect for us to work with. Next. Now this is Jan Eric uh, filming local people, uh, children, etc., for against a green screen for the film, which you'll see later. So you'll see these people in quite a different setting once Jan Eric has finished uh, with them later on. Next. Ah, there they go. Here's some of the children flying over the bridge magically. And again, you'll see some of them later too. Next. Wandering along rivers, I love to discover this kind of little detail. Um, the sign appears not to say much. Uh, in normal circumstances in a single country, it wouldn't mean anything. Two towns, Straban and Lifford, angling together. But of course, Straban is on one side of the border and Lifford on the other. So I thought it was worth taking this picture to indicate another kind of cross-border cooperation that happens during peacetime. Next. I'm often inspired by archive photographs. This is a lovely one from the village of Claddy about 1910. That is the bridge. You can see the cut water. You can see the parapets on either side. And this woman has posed in the middle of the bridge in her best, best clothing. Um, and I found this, I mean, we discovered it literally on our first or second day. Um, and I just love this photograph. And I think that probably the first poem that I wrote um, is inspired by this. I don't know if I'll have time to read it this evening, but I did want to, I did want you to meet her in 1910. Next. And uh, this is the, this is the notebook, uh, Notes from a Border River. Okay, let's go. So um, I just wanted to give you a taste of the, what the notebook is like. It's a kind of scrapbook. So there are little verses in it that seem to come from nowhere to me, almost from the beginning. There are diary entries, which I'll read some of, and there are bits of research that I did. Um, so it's a bit of a mixed bag, and that's why I call it a notebook. Um, so it starts in March with a little poem. I'll just explain that a curra is a traditional Irish boat. Landing, a curra of water with a sail of wind, a wanderer wonders where to begin. Fourth of March, Irish Sea, ferry journey from Wales to Dublin, foot passenger, gray bright day, the ferry fat, packed with cars and lorries, sturdy, but very slightly it rolls and creaks uneasily. 5th of March to Claddy, Northern Ireland. We drive up separately from the south in two cars. The blue Volvo with Eileen, partner James, and their baby Finn at their own pace, and Jan Eric and me in a rented Dacia Sandero, guided by a GPS he's brought from Finland. A female voice 
soothing, but firm and Swedish. After 100 meters, Svang Hoger. After 100 meters, Svang Vanster. Vanster, Hoger, Hoger, Vanster. A Viking muse with limited vocabulary and a taste for outrageously small back roads. Irish hours go by. We're crossing counties, seeking a river, and finally, through village streets, a road sign, thin. We've arrived. And here's the bridge we've so far only seen on Google Earth, where it's 16 astonishing cutwater parapets point in both directions, up river and down, like a double-edged saw blade thrown across the river. And down the river's center, an invented yellow line drawn in virtual space, the border. Now in the real world, the bridge is littered and dull, with little room for walkers by the single file rumble of lorries coming and going in a red, amber, green, repetitive disco, back and forth from one Ireland to another, past three strangers, Eileen, Janerik, me, and a baby in his Irish father's arms, fin over fin, past the Celtic cross that blesses the frontier, the black and gold plaque to the dead volunteer. Now a storm called Freya had just passed over a couple of days before, you may remember it, March 2019, a fierce storm they named Freya. So this Viking theme that I'd started with was kind of in the air as well. And we know we found our touchstone, this working sculpture over a river under a dark sky threatened with rain, littered with storm leftovers, strangely beautiful. In the cloud gap, Jan Eric sets the drone to fly. It hums like a disturbed band of wasps, but he watches it meticulously, more like a falconer. And Wikipedia tells us that Freya in Norse mythology is a goddess associated with War, death, love, sex, beauty, fertility, gold, and sorcery. And she's the owner of a necklace, Brisingamen. She rides a chariot pulled by two cats. And she possesses a cloak of falcon feathers. So even without mentioning Yeats, there's falcons twice in one breath. I began to jot down these little verses, as I mentioned, uh, which seemed to come to me from nowhere. They, they weren't the beginnings of poems. They seemed to be something quite different. And I'll just give you a flavor of them and also the little bits of research that I did and that I've dropped into the notebook to give background. So for example, from Dharmid Ferreter, The Border, 2019, brand new book just published when we started to work. Brexit rendered optimism redundant and the bellicosity generated by the updated border debate inevitably brought a long history aggressively back into current affairs. Long lens. Norsemen with iron helms, squaddies and binoculars, tourists and Ray-Bans, all catch and release sun glint off deceptive waters, the latest news. Six, of eight, six and eighth to March, we're rushing from meeting to meeting, no time to be tourists. Apart from the bogside murals, now a visitor attraction, the city within and without the walls of its London prefix is trying hard to be ordinary. Uh, the novelist Colm Toybin wrote a book in 1986 called Walking Along the Border. And this is what he said then. People in Straban would see a 32 mile, 32 vehicle convoy wade through the town in the middle of the night, 
full of supplies for the new army checkpoint at Cladi. On the 7th of March, we meet with council officers in the Alley Theatre in Straban, who are very helpful. That's Jean Smith and her colleagues, very helpful. And they tell us about the Community Association in Cladi. And they have a reputation for being up for anything. And that sounds just up our street as well. Wikipedia. Cladi from Irish meaning muddy margin of a stream or river, a small village and townland in County Tyrone, Northern Ireland. It lies about four miles from Straban on the River Finn and borders with the Republic of Ireland. In 2001, the census had its population as 423 people. Some say St. Paddy, cross the Finn at Claddy to face off with the Druids at Beltany, where a circle of stone seemed deeply needy for a new square peg dubbed Christianity. So that was March. Uh, in April and May, I'm back in York thinking about everything. And uh, on the 8th of April, I'm thinking about uh, Eileen and her work. Ecology, river and artery, not a border. Eileen's vision of seeds and insects crossing at will. Micro scale, the irrelevance and absurdity of this border and all borders in the light of nature and climate emergency. And I have a kind of image of women somewhere hard at work, some kind of strangely urgent work. And I write this little ditty. The crows are jeering on Claddy Bridge. You can enter and you can exit. It's a troll free bridge, at least until Brexit. And then on the 18th of April, still in York, News of journalist Lyra McKee killed during rioting on the Cregan estate in Derry. The danger just under the skin bursts out again. Danger has freedom of movement. So this image of a young woman taken away, murdered, taken away from us, murdered, um, kind of uh, stuck with me, as you might imagine. And this image comes up again. So in June, I made a trip back to Ireland on my own. 12th of June, Northern Ireland. This trip, I'm on my own. Rented car. Drive from Belfast across country. Pass a sign. Seamus Heaney, home place. But no time to knock on his door. 13th of June, Claddy. A June day on Claddy Bridge, strong wind, a cold Westminsterly. Ruth McPhillips and me wrapped in raincoats, though the river is calm. The horses are here again, green manes and tails adrift in the wind. Long horsetail river reeds, restless under water, beyond the bridge arches, pointing towards Straban. Maeve is off to Barry, with Barry, to talk to the school about insect costumes for Jan Eric's film. Shivering, it was an awful cold day. Shivering, we take shelter in the hall where Mary McCorkle and the Claddy Craft Group are knitting with warm, bright wools for the village against the weather. Soon, two reheated strangers are tasting tea and biscuits and banter. The women's presence enfolds, as it seems without thought or effort. We are welcomed, defrozen, decoded, embraced. My key contact during the June visit was the treasurer of the Claddy group, Barry Lafferty. 
So on the 14th of June, Barry offered to take me to the source of the River Finn, which takes us actually uh, west into Donegal. So the Finn heads away from the, from the United Kingdom into Donegal and ends up in the mountains there. I drive with Barry from Claddy into Donegal in his small white van, heading west for the source of the Finn at the very high speeds that seem normal around here. Sure, I'm a careful driver, he says. I note the rosary wrapped around his gear stick. The landscape is full of stories here, and Barry effortlessly reels them off as we pass through. Donna Loop. In the war, they buried the church bell in the graveyard, afraid it'd be used to melt down for weapons. And then for a while they forgot where it was. Now it's in Lifford, he says, but we'd like it back. Lander's Wheels, it's a part of the river. They say it's haunted by the ghost of a young woman who was murdered and drowned there in times past. Her name was Bella Brooks and the killers got off. So among other things, uh, I, found, I found myself suddenly a balladeer, which I never expected really to be, because these poems are quite untypical of what I usually write. So I'm writing a new ballad for Bella Brooks. Bella's killer. Bella Brooks, I love ya. Bella Brooks, I want ya. If Bella, you'll not have me. Bella Brooks, I'll kill you. Bella's reply. And though a hundred years go by, you'll not own me beneath the sky. For in these stories, I shall thrive. No rest will your kind ever have. And here's a new ballad for the buried bell. I just love the story the parishioners burying this bell to protect it. A new ballad of the buried bell. In wartime sunk from argent to lip, at night with the dead in a quick dug pit, by a priest with the aid of some village men in case the army might come again to claim its metal for melting down. With a prayer it's buried from argent to lip, far from its belfry, like a sunken ship, beneath the ground bulbous and bat-free, like the tongues of those it hangs out with now, the bell sounds only in memory. Right, time's marching on. Marcus McManus, who's the chair of the board, he dropped me off near Claddy one day, still June. I'm using the time very intensively, as you can imagine. And uh, if you drop a poet off into a strange place, what will he or she do? Visit the dead. So I visited the graveyard uh, near Claddy. And it turns out that uh, there's an old part, wonderful classic part of the graveyard, very haunting. And then there's a new part where all the graves are quite new. And it turns out that that new part of the cemetery um, was on the site of the Ernie Chocolate Company, which had existed in Claddy for five or six years, given people lots of employment during that period, 1919 to 1924, so just after the First War, but with a very sad history of destruction by fire and eventually having been burned down twice, uh, the Ernie Chocolate Company moved to the Republic, I guess for safety. And uh, here's a lullaby. Boiling sugar and cocoa butter spilled together made a sweet smelling fire. All our jobs went up in smoke, but it burned for hours by the winter river. In Ernie Graveyard, 
graveyard planted on the vacant site of a chocolate works, scribed on headstones, the names of the gone, dated and sweetened. So I'm going to read uh, just a couple of poems now before we see Jan Eric's film. Um, and it starts off with the, uh, with the poem based on my, on my journey from Wales to Dublin. Irish Ferry, 2019. The ship unstately seems steady, risk rhetorical, yet metals gossip, each rivet nervous with sea pulse. Spray shot windows, green fields of sea, waves purse their slow long lips with a promise of light, but drift away. On the horizon, a thumb smudge of land. Man, he Brazil, America, Republic or Queendom, one Ireland or another. Depends who's dreaming. Uh, one day I was wandering uh, by the river and um, came across a demolished, the site of a demolished bridge kind of buried in summer flowers. And um, it was a railway bridge that once carried the railway across from Straban to Lifford, in other words, from uh, the UK to the Republic now. But of course, when it was built, uh, the whole area was under British dominion. Um, so I was contemplating this invisible bridge, um, as poets sometimes will, because in Northern Ireland, and I thought about this a lot, some things are visible, some things invisible. And my friend Doc, uh, Declan McGonagall told me very early, he said, here you need, you need dual vision when you're here to understand what's happening. So I was interested in the relationship between visible and invisible, but also the railway bridge had been broken, the connection had been broken. And, and I was interested in that disconnection because of course of the issue of borders. So it's called The Lost Ways. Why were the railways that bound us briefly so utterly wrecked? The ghosts of their tracks, brick traces and renovated skulls of little stations in important small places, the empty stone sockets of bridges that wedded hills, made faced off riverbanks converse, now spook the lands they shrank and span imaginary air everywhere in the United Kingdom of summer. And here too, in the constantly breaking news from wind-drowned abutments that reminisce under troubled elderflower cream, stretching once more over border waters between Lifford and Straban, clearly invisible. This is a poem that voices uh, a conversation I had with someone I met while I was there in Claddy, and I've called it Seamus. I came to the village in 61. Donegal boy loved a Tyrone girl. Remember the blacksmith acted the dentist, pulled teeth with a string tied tight to the rotter, lost as you jerked from a red hot poker. Seen it all, the growing darkness, scared young men on every side, roads blown, refilled like teeth doors kicked in by army boots, firefights and frightened wanes. Then the village losing its breath, 
mills and shops closed, new bar built where the scutch mill stood, wife and friends grown old, dying, prim new houses up the hill, but mainly just for sleeping. So I help out where I can, warm my bones on the hope, the school, the village hall, and watch over the women at their noisy, patient knitting. And finally, before the film, I'll just read one more, which is a poem that seems quite simple. It just involves walking from one side of the bridge to the other. And I found myself that summer thinking about the river as a border, but also thinking about bridges quite a bit, as you've, as you've seen. So this one's called Walking from Ireland to Ireland on Claddy Bridge in 2019. Crossing this border bridge among swallows, bearing all the head can hold for any distance and whatever rests briefly in the heart's case. The river is high today, some storms onward dream. Cars tear past beside you to the endless click of red, amber, green and horses graze in the littered pasture. Now a boy shouts from the far side by the village inn that squats so plain it could be posed in a sepia photo a century ago, but the boy's shirt is bright red. Every river divides and joins and anyone might admit the land looks the same on both sides. In a few days, you'll grasp some of what you don't know. The inn is Kirk's, the lad called Brian. That bleak fenced car lot offers its deals on the footprint of an army watchtower. But now when the passing stranger turns to ask, do you have people here? his gentle way of saying, what are you doing on our bridge? You claim the tourist's easy ignorance. Everywhere the world is local, sky unbroken over borders inside and out, two countries where swallows, fears, yearning, cross from bank to bank carelessly. So in my diary, in the notebook, it's the 20th of July, exactly a year ago today. And it's the day of the big event. We gather at the hall. It's good weather, gray, but no rain. The marquee's been set up at the back car park for Eileen's ecology workshops. And the observation beehive has miraculously arrived on the scene. The Bee Beyond performers begin to arrive in extraordinary costumes. A man with a boot on his head, dragging a line of shoes behind him like memory. And 20 bright Vuvuzelis announce the start of the happening, blowing chaotically towards the river and the bridge from the hall's high floodproof terrace. So now we'll see an Eric's film. Uh, enjoy the day at Claddy. Border River. Bird song on the fin I couldn't name, nor from which side the bird song came. It came again, it came again, but from which country I couldn't name. First, let's 
imagine a river flowing past us as we stand on the bank. Rivers are scenes in the cloth of the land. Rivers join and they also divide. This particular river forms a border between two countries that look very much the same. Gazing around, it's hard to tell which bank of the river, which country we're standing in. The river flows past in front of us, carrying everything that rivers carry as they go. These are made using uh, solar panels and a small vibrating motor. Um, and part of the, uh, the idea behind the, the creation of them was to look at the importance of pollinators um, in terms of supporting our biodiversity. And now we can use sustainable technology in accordance with ecology, allowing those two systems to develop side by side. Um, rather than a separate entity. And I worked there all my life during the troubles. Right. So yeah. every day was shooting, no, bombing. I, you know. And and as you know, as much here as, as anywhere. Like it's a small place, aye, but a lot aye. a lot of bad stuff happened aye, here. Aye, a lot of bad stuff happened. Really? Very good. Thank you. There you are. That's it. Two, two spectacular. Right they're solid. They're solid. You'll have to get a few, few hives well, you up to, in your we garden. We have to clean the hive motion workers. <laughs> Probably best to put that out. There's one wee, like that, yeah. wee, wee bee hatcher. Yeah, it's really nice. Oh, I see it now. Can you zoom in so at the minute, uh, people are writing messages for the bridge uh, based on freedom of movement. So they're thinking about um, how fish, birds and insects are moving freely across the borders.
So here's the 33 wildflower native Irish species. All equally distributed through. Yeah, it takes a little bit, it's a bit fiddly, but you just kind of have to work the clay. And then how long do we put it in the oven for? <laughs> Um, three days in a burlap oven. We want to have our 33 native species of wildflower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're working on making paper microscopes. Yeah, we're studying um, plants and animals, looking at mold, pollen, bees, bee wings. Yeah, and then taking pictures of it. And you put it over your camera. Let me get this image. This is a, a cross section of a pine needle. Or a spaceship, I'm not quite sure. It's just it, looking at biodiversity. It's not limited to political boundaries, but it's um, a shared environment, shared place, um, shared heritage, shared um, yeah, ecology, um, all connected. There's no kind of delineation. Um, and it just, these microscopes and the photographs, it just enables us to engage with the local environment, to kind of study, to be part of. To, to look at the small things that we might overlook. the bridge with tea and biscuits offered to strangers women we know are knitting the bridge with long strands of rain that fall in the hills on the slippery banks of peace the women are knitting the bridge under the moon and all night long in kitchens and fields in their flaxen shawls women we know are knitting the bridge under the moon and all night long, if they stop, the fish and children may die. Among the rushes and the watchtower ghosts, the women are knitting the bridge. In bright strands and grey in the village hall, on the river that slips between trouble and peace, slides under the bridge that crosses the border, the women we know are knitting the bridge. This will do.
Now, Robert, just as we're waiting for the film to finish, all the credits, um, we've had quite a few questions. So do we want to, there's some questions and some comments. Um, do you want me to, to kind of start reading something out to you? Yeah, give us a flavour of the comments. Oh, oh, very, very positive. I'll, I'll do my um, best. I'll do my best <laughs> to answer the questions, yeah. I think there's fewer questions and really nice comments. So we'll go through them because they're, they're brilliant. Um, from Amina, fascinating and hope inspiring project and so good to hear such intricate death poems, some wonderful synergies. I'll have to go now, but so glad I managed to squeeze this in. <laughs> um, Chris Bridges asked, although don't answer just yet because he asked a question for Robert, what can an outsider bring to this, this area that residents on either side won't be able to top? And then about 10 minutes later, he said, the film answered my question. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Monique says, in this latest creation, you add poetry as a form of urban art. Is it easier to write the verse like lines than the poems? Do you, do you want me to answer uh, that? Uh, the, verse, the verse lines are, in a sense, easier because you sort of fall back on an earlier form. Uh, involving rhyme and rhythm, which a lot of my poetry doesn't do so overtly. And also, I just felt I was kind of picking up bits of the landscape or bits of conversation or bits of stories and, and kind of writing with them, you know. So, so they're kind of informal and, uh, and fun. I mean, the, the, crows, uh, the crows on Claddy Bridge uh, for example, that was fun. It was fun to write that as dark as it, as it was at the time, too. As, um, so I think they are quite um, different, but I felt I was dipping into a more traditional mode, and I, I, I did find it uh, easy. Um, so I wondered what, what that might mean for my future work. But of course, many poets in the past and now work very well with rhyme and rhythm but it seemed to me like different voices i was able to play with different voices and it was quite liberating really good thank you um, a few more comments uh, bob chase loved hearing about this extraordinary place while floating on the river stalked thanks robert after singing my choir now i love finding out about people's other lives <laughs> um dr merv Libor. Beautifully articulated, Robert, your sensitivity to language and understanding of nuance between cultures is really inspiring for bringing people together across difference. Many thanks. Another one from Monique. Uh, what's the symbolism of the red shirt, shirt, yours and the boys? Yes, I almost uh, read, wore my red shirt this evening, but I was forbidden, so, uh, oh. so I didn't. Um, in, in the poem, <laughs> The little boy, I mean, the scene is so old, I felt, that, that um, some things hadn't changed. So, it, so I describe it looking like a, a sepia photograph. So I simply put the boy in a colourful shirt uh, to show that it wasn't a sepia photograph, it was happening now. So that spark of colour in the poem was about that. Um, mm. the, the red shirt I wore at the performance is just because, you know, I'm, I'm a sort of secret performer, really. So red, you know, red seemed, seemed appropriate. And of course, in Jan Eric's film, uh, it, it, it shows quite, quite clearly. But there's, there wasn't a conscious connection, Monique, between uh, the red shirt in the poem and the red shirt I wore. Um, let's have a little look this they're starting to come in now we're going to have to be cutting people off right patrick lodge said a marvelous film evocative and hope filmed the images of footwear were extremely powerful and the seed balls too pollination and rivers don't care for artificiality nor does poetry thanks robert um monique again thank you for another beautiful book a notebook as you call it your process emphasizes the present moment where poetry belongs mercy um tanya acrophy that was absolutely sublime evie to everyone wonderful thank you gail inspiring collaboration julie williamson a wonderful celebration of life thank you um sarah wimbush super film robert very inspiring love the women are knitting oz great stuff robert a fascinating project and from deborah powell ah bravo chapeau read the leaflet before read the leaflet before but nothing like spoken word and jan eric's film is awesome um 
and this is the last one I'm going to read out because they're coming in now. Nairn Kennedy, very interesting and also informative. Thanks, Robert. And at that stage, I am going to cut the questions off and say, yeah. Yeah, I need to echo some of those um, sentiments. I, I just, I've spent the afternoon with the pamphlet, kind of getting my head right into it, having just um, done a little bit of prep before. And it's, the, the pamphlet goes absolutely beautifully with the film and I can strongly recommend that people um, buy it. So I'm going to do you a little advert now, which is you can buy it if you want to buy the pamphlet, you can get it from Robert's website, which is rjpowell.org. And if you want to watch the film again, it's on YouTube. So if you just go into YouTube and just search for Voicing the Bridge, um, it should be the first one that pops up. Um, and it's well worth another look. It's just, there's so many things in there once you've kind of had a little read of the pamphlet. So um, thank you, Robert. Um, I've got one I'd more like poem to, say, to read. Oh yes, I know. Okay. Just getting to that. Well, I was hoping we were going to get the woman on the bridge, but never mind. We'll, well do I mean, one more. Really, and then, um... Yeah, I think it's really up to you. I, I, I know that sometimes readings go on a bit and I don't want to over <laughs> it. But of, course, of course, I'd be happy to read the woman on the bridge, uh, that haunting photograph. But otherwise, I could just read the, the coda and we could say goodnight to each other. So you have to you have to make a decision on behalf of everybody. Well, no, OK, I'm going to go for woman on the bridge and then the coda and then I'll come back in. OK, thank you. OK, so you remember the photograph of the woman standing and um, in around 1910. Um, and she's in her, she's in her Sunday best. Um, and and I, I, it struck me she was looking a bit old fashioned, even for 1910. Um, and then behind her, there's a wagon stood on the road. So no one else in sight, just this wagon with a wagoner. And so I've imagined a little story from that photograph. And I address the woman. It's called Woman on a Bridge, Ireland, circa 1910. After a photograph made from a glass plate, negative. Already you're out of time, seriously old fashioned. Street lads snigger at your veil. The Sabbath cap donned on a weekday. That fur muff from your grave dead aunt. And the century has already turned away from all that seemed briefly true to leave you stranded halfway between here and there, where the cut water parapets of the bridge to your left and right greet and regret the river's passage, waves of stone and light looping back into the past and ahead beyond your frame, towards new fads and atrocities on our side of this window. Maybe you thought your times were the best and you blessed to be alive, there where the world seems simpler, black and white. And maybe you wouldn't have cared how sharp tongues teased, dressed in your best on the empty bridge, while the man with the camera steadied himself above the current. If only Duffy, ever the lamb, limelight hog, hadn't trundled up in his trap to complicate the scene. Yet here he sits, horse and all, hovering dumbly over your left shoulder forever. Sure, much better if it had just been you, standing prim in your cape and era, poised between your place and ours, holding the bridge for the whole feckless village still against those from beyond the pale. Pagans, sinners, street lads, Duffy, us, latecomers, all.
And finally, this is uh, the little poem at the end of the pamphlet, which I suppose attempts, attempts as a coda will to uh, represent the whole and summarize it. Coda, a boat made of water, a bridge made of air, a saint in his kura, all dreaming here. A young woman murdered is robbed from us all, with church bells buried, tongues stopped with soil. The men of death may come again, challenge them now, too late by then. Innocent shadows on a border river, currents of summer, bridges to nowhere, rinsed in the weir, rain in the air. Don't look, see, don't listen, hear. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight.